Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a fun little video for you. If you guys will hang around till after the break, we'll get out here and see what we can find in the fall garden. Alrighty guys, fall is upon us. We are uh, in day two or three of fall and uh, we're just after the equinox and the days are going to be getting shorter and the nights are going to be getting longer. Guys, this is when the plants start to sense that the daylight's getting short, they're getting more dark than day and uh, they're going to start winding down or they're going to start, you know, ripening their fruit and getting ready to wind down the season. For uh, some plants that'll mean perhaps even prematurely ripening or uh, stunting their growth so there's a lot of things to look forward to in fall there's a lot of things that'll help shut your garden down though too so guys we're just going to take a look around we'll see what's going on here on the homestead and it's been a while since we did a little walk around but tina's left me home alone so i'm free to do what i want so guys we're going to get out here we're going to take a look at the gardens we hope you enjoy it all right guys we'll start a little walk around tour here we're in the raised bed garden i wanted to show you one of these uh Tomato plants, they're doing really well. They've climbed up here into the arbor. Still got a lot of uh, green tomatoes left on them. But guys, this plant is approaching, oh, eight feet, nine feet tall, however tall that arch is. But uh, guys, the plants, as you can tell, they've matured. They've had a full, full season. And we can go from there down to some plants that are being taken over by the blight. We're probably gonna get one more flush out of them. You can see they're still hanging with a lot a lot of tomatoes on them but the plants are starting to give out for fall so we're looking forward to maybe one or two good pickings left off of these and then uh guys we're going to be about done with tomatoes for the year all right we're moving on down through the center of the raised bed and i wanted to show you the pepper plants they are all still doing fantastic we're glad to have all the peppers this year we like to chop them up in about one inch pieces and freeze them and uh, that'll keep us all year but at the prices that the stores are charging for bell peppers now around here they're getting almost two dollars a piece for the raised for the colored bell peppers and uh, over a dollar still even just for green ones but we have got them hanging all over the plants and we're glad to have them so just want to bring you through we'll show you the peppers are still producing really well we we'll jump over here to this bed and take a look still got plenty of peppers on the plant we have shared them with everyone we know, I think, but still plenty here. So, guys, your pepper plants, we're getting ready to stub these out. We'll probably bring them indoors for the winter. If you don't know how to do that, we'll probably have a video on it. A lot of people seem to ask about that every year. But you can stump them out, and uh, what we'll do is we'll let them dry down a little bit, and uh, we'll get all the peppers off of them. We'll cut them back to stumps, and... Uh, then when they show any sign of new growth, we'll replant them in pots, and then we'll take them into the basement of the house where it stays cooler, and we'll overwinter them there under lights. We keep them under lights, but we don't overwater them. So, but a pepper plant on they say can last for uh, for uh, seven years. Longest we've gone is say five years. So, um, haven't had much luck keeping them getting into the older older plants, but I know some people have done it in greenhouses. So. Bringing them in and out, it's a little bit harder on them, get a little shorter lifespan. But it's sure fun to start out the season with mature plants rather than having to buy new ones every year. So let's go find us something else to get into, but those are the pepper plants. All right, guys, real quick stop over here at the fall beets. The plants have gotten big. The bugs are biting up the leaves. So guys, we probably won't be eating beet leaves this year. We'll probably just break those off and give them to the chickens. But the beets, are still pretty small as you can see and uh, or hopefully you can see but we'll get out here they've still got time we are not expecting our uh, our uh, first frost anytime soon so these have got time to grow I just wanted to bring in here fall beets are one of the things that you can grow they're uh, they're really good for you and they're easy to grow so um, that's an update on them we'll just get out here we'll keep finding things to get into alrighty guys these are some little cherry trees that we've got potted up here. We were getting ready to uh, wait for them to go dormant and then we'll probably plant them. But 
One of the other things we still got going on here in the garden are acorn squash. They are doing really, really well. They're getting ready to set on another bunch of acorn squash. We'll put down through here, there's some other ones. But uh, they're getting ready to put these acorn squash on. That's another late season crop you can grow. Later in the season, you want to be careful about overwatering. It's really, really hot in the fall, but uh, overwatering helps leach nutrients out of the soil. So if you've got to really get out there and water, then you've got to really get out there and fertilize. Because, uh, guys, if you just keep rinsing water through the soil, the soil is not going to have very, be very nutritious or very good for the plant. So, guys, just remember, if you got to water, then you got to feed. All right, guys, one of the things I'll show you, we're kind of a saving Tina's gourds for another video. They are doing fantastic. But what you're looking at here are one of our pumpkin plants, our little granddaughter Adeline. She was showing them off when she was here in her little video. But I wanted to show you the pumpkins are doing well. I'm not sure they're going to make it in time for Halloween, but we're going to let them have every chance they can. So they're racing the, they're racing the bell to see if we can have jack-o'-lanterns for the year. Otherwise, we're just going to eat some really good pie. All right, guys, Tina's not here, so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend I'm not showing you her gourds. But it's hard to tell in a picture exactly how big something is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not show you the gourd. I'm going to show you my Fitbit. But uh, just so you have an idea, that gourd goes from there. Let's see, there's one edge. And we'll go clear across to the other edge. So that gourd is that gourd is easy two feet across. So, but we weren't looking at that. We were just checking out Mark's new Fitbit, and that's snazzy. But uh, we'll go on and find us something else to look at since we're not looking at gourds today. All right, guys. Been a little bit since we talked about the asparagus beds. These are the new asparagus beds we built this year. Those are the asparagus plants ferned out, and as you can see, we've. Uh, We've been adding dirt to them, bringing the soil level up. We still got a little walkway there in the middle. But overall, we're really, really happy. This in two or three years, I won't say next year, but uh, maybe the year after that, we'll get a picking off of it, a good picking. But in two or three years, this will really mature into a nice asparagus bed. Be a lot better than those small beds we were growing it in. I think the, the beds were... The beds were nice, but I don't think they're big enough really to overwinter the crowns, and I think each year the crowns took a little bit of damage, and it always just kind of kept our harvest down. So we've got those grounds down below, uh, or we've got those heads down below ground level now, and all buried in. We'll keep adding soil. We'll probably add soil one more time before winter gets here, but then uh, these guys should be ready to go. All right, guys. One of the things we're working on here on the homestead is we are getting to put getting ready to put the tomato bed to sleep so all of these tomatoes they had grown up over the tops of these posts here but we have cut them all free of the posts and cut free their bindings and uh, we'll go ahead we tie them up with a natural jute twine that we can compost but we've gone ahead and cut them down we're just getting the you can kind of see that jute twine's nice because it breaks down over the season but you can kind of see where it gets some rot to it but anyway and we still got plenty of tomatoes, don't worry. So what we do is we'll cut them free and uh, we're just getting ready. We're getting ready to take them all out at one time. So we're gonna let the last few of these tomatoes that are on the plants go ahead and flush out and uh, they'll turn red or they'll start to turn red. Um, that time we'll do our last picking and when we do our last picking, we'll also take the plants out of the ground. We'll move them away from this area. We'll, they'll take any blight that they've got on them with them and uh, we'll probably just go uh, turn them into another bed somewhere where they can't hurt anything. A lot of things blight doesn't affect and we've got a lot of garden space where it can't hurt a thing. So we compost in place. We don't have a big compost pile to put it on. But we do have plenty of garden space and a tiller that we can just till it in. So that's going to be the final fate of the tomatoes. Like I said, I'll just bring in here, show you we're in, the, we're in the final stages. We've got them all cut free. They fell down to the ground. They're vining along the ground now. And they're getting ready for their last picking. And then... Uh, Guys, we'll be done with tomatoes for the year. I think Tina's, Tina's been done with them for about a month. So, <laughs> she's had about enough of canning sauce. We've canned more than probably we have in the last five years. So, it's been a great year for the tomatoes, but now it's time to set them free. Let's we'll swing you by here and say hi to the chickens as we head on up to the porch. These are our buff-laced Brahmas. We also raised the Aom Samani 
and the blue lace red Wyandotte. But these are our buff lace Brahmas. They are a very rare coloration. But we enjoy raising them. They're nice big birds. These are all very, very young. We uh, went ahead and uh, changed out part of our flock this year. So these guys are just which just past the juvenile stage. We wanted them up this up about this size so they could at least make it through the winter for sure. But thought I'd stop by and give you a look. Those are our buff lace Brahmas. All right, guys, we're over here by the grape arbor. They are definitely shutting down for the year. We had a great, great harvest off of them. Made some awesome grape juice. But uh, pond's getting ready. You can see the color starting to change around the pond. It's really, really pretty over there. We got Tina's shop off there in the distance. And we got our chicken tractor. But uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about it lately. But uh, we're getting it ready to, uh, we're gonna put some fresh paint on it. And we're going to get it ready and we're going to move our chuckers out here. Chucker is a form of partridge. They're about, oh, three times, four times the size of a quail, but smaller than a chicken. So, but anyway, we're going to move our chuckers out here into the, into the big old um, chicken tractor here. Sorry. Just walking around. Walking and talking apparently is beyond my skill set. So, but let me show you. We've got some big wheels on there. We've got a couple of sets of roll down wheels. We can roll those down. I can grab that front tongue up there with the tractor and we can take this thing anywhere we want. But our builder thought it was amusing to put the put the half moon or crescent moon in here. So uh, we've had it mistaked for an outhouse before, but you don't want to open that. The rooster in there that's usually in there would not be happy. So here we see a little bit of nature going on. We got a dragonfly that lost the battle to the spider. I don't need to see that but all right guys let's see there's a fig tree much better thing to look at but the fig tree seems that it doesn't do very well here it catches a lot of wind gets a lot of die back on it during the winter and then it plays most of the spring trying to catch up but let's see if we can get up in here it is covered in figs and those will go on and ripen up before fall we hope the lower ones are ripened up already there's some ripe ones but we'll get out here we'll pick around on these figs a little bit but they've never been a real staple around here they're more just a treat when we've got them we've got them and when we don't we don't so but we enjoy having the fig trees here it's just a little been a little bit of an adventure trying to be successful with them all right guys we've moved over here to the pond and i thought what i would do is just give you a nice long shot of the pond it's getting really pretty with the different color weeds and stuff changing and stuff and we got a lot of algae on the pond not a big deal but that is a spring fed pond it stays at that level all year long you'll never see it up you'll never see it down it just stays right there but got the pretty trees up here blowing in the wind that's made filming a little uh, difficult today but we're gonna go ahead we'll head up here to the porch we'll close things down we just wanted to give you one last look here at the pond all right guys i was walking back up towards the house and i came by the chicken tractor here again thought i would share this little nugget with you if you enjoy feeding your animals we uh we give our animals all of our extra stuff that we get out of the garden but now that we've got the chickens moved out of here they were we had some of our buff laces in here and uh, we're getting ready to put our chuckers in here but when we move the buff laces out over to their main pen they're the ones i showed you earlier this is what's left over. Guys, these are all baby volunteer tomato plants. They're not weeds that sprang up back in here. We're looking down inside the chicken tractor run. Guys, those are all volunteer tomato plants. I thought that was pretty funny. We may, uh, we may yet get a tomato harvest out of the chicken tractor. All right, guys. Maybe before we take off, we'll talk about a couple of potential upcoming projects. One of them is going to be to try to figure out what to do with this trailer. Now it is 14 feet long. I believe it's 6 feet wide inside to inside on the wheel wells. But we had a, we had a, bought this trailer some time back. And it's been on loan to a friend of ours who was uh, starting out an outdoor furniture business and stuff. And he's uh, grown his little business up to where he can get his own trailer. And uh, this one has come back to us. So. That's going to be a fun little project. We haven't decided what to do with it yet. We've had all kinds of an ideas from a mobile hunting shed to a tiny house to a 
who knows what. So a bug out uh, camper vehicle house thing. But uh, hey, if you want, leave your comments down below. We could always use an idea for sure. One thing we know has got to go is this heavy wood floor. But uh, we may uh, weld some expanded metal in there or something. It just depends on what the end purpose of the trailer is going to be as to what kind of flooring we put in it. But right now, the couple things that uh, the shiny black paint has to go. That's a, that's a new. We're going to get rid of that. But uh, the shiny black paint's got to go. And uh, that heavy wood floor would uh, take a lot of weight off of the trailer. So we've got our big vehicle mover trailer. We really don't. Uh, we really don't need much else. That 16 footer drop tail will handle about anything there is on this property. So I can put my tractor and my truck on it. So um, let's see what else we got for a project. Tina's got the pallet stored up here. Interesting to see what she's going to do with that later on. But well, we'll just keep right on rolling. Take a look at the trailer, walk around, and guys, here's going to be another project. I pulled out my 10 foot flat bottom, and uh, I'd like to be able to uh, do a little fishing with dad here this spring. But uh, we want to be able to get out with something that's pretty stable. Dad's not a big swimmer, so uh, we don't want to dump him in the lake. Guys, this is just a little 10 footer. I've had it since uh, we lived in North Carolina. But I've got the new licenses for it now. We'll go ahead and get those put on it. We'll change the numbers over. I got the registration done. We'll probably give it a nice camo paint job or something. Maybe we'll do that as a video. And then uh, we'll just see where it goes from there. But that's going to be another upcoming project. All right, guys. That's about going to wrap it up for today's video. We hope you enjoyed looking around at some of the things going on here this fall. Um, that's not a complete garden tour. We've got a few things that we're going to hold back. We've got a Still make it through a whole season of making videos, so we don't want to we don't want to give you the whole uh, feed basket at once. So, guys, uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you're growing in your fall garden or how it's going. And if you have any questions, for sure, leave them down there. We'll uh, do our best to answer them if we can. But uh, we we really appreciate you guys coming out here, taking a look around the homestead. If you like this kind of thing, we hope you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Down next to the subscribe button is a bell. If you'll ring that bell, that'll send you a notification whenever we put out a new video. Guys, that's a great way to keep up with the channel. If you do ring the bell, then uh, please go ahead and uh, it'll ask you about the notifications. Please set it to all notifications. Then that'll let you know for sure whenever we let a new video out. So, guys, thanks for coming by the channel. Um, before we go, let me give one shout out um, to four people. So, we're going to split this up. And, but it's all going to one place. We're going to shout out the Crockers in today's video, and that means all of them. So, got a few channels to check out. The first one is The Crockers. That would be Jason and his wife, Jaylena. They run a, they are down in uh, South Texas on some uh, family property, doing some, doing some hard work and some great things in the heat of South Texas. And Jason, he has a twin brother who has a channel. That channel is Jared Crocker, J-A-R-E-D, Jared Crocker. Uh, Jared is an amputee in northern Texas and he is running a homestead and guys he's a fantastic guy if you would please go check him out and give his channel some love but so far we've got the Crockers and we've got Jared Crocker now Jason not only does he have a brother he's got a wife Jaylena has his own her own channel so Jaylena has been doing some fun crafting things I think she's starting to work with some uh, acrylics and epoxies and uh, always always fun to try something new but if you check out Jaylena, her channel is Jaylena Crocker, J-A-Y-L-E-N-A, -E Jaylena. But, uh, and then for the fourth channel, the, the boy's mother has put together a channel. It's, it's brand new. She is really, really funny. If you're, if you're uh, my age or so, then uh, you'll really get a kick out of her. But uh, you younger folks might too. So um, if you would check her out, her channel is Melanie Crocker, M-E-L-A-N-I-E. -E. But uh, so... If you would, we've got uh, four channels on there, one good family, but they are The Crockers, Jared Crocker, Jaylena Crocker, and Melanie Crocker. So, like I said, if you would, go check them out. Tell them Bumblebee Junction said hi, and uh, tell them you're from the swarm. Tell them Bumblebee Junction sent the swarm. So, you guys go uh, busy bee them, and uh, I'm going to be well you here, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.